Once again, he is risen. Hallelujah, Hallelujah indeed. Well, once again, welcome friends and family. You know, I don't know if anybody dragged you in here today, but the reality is this place is one giant family, and we are very glad that you're here to celebrate with us. And parents who are out there, who are some of you praying that the Easter egg hunt will not come, uh, I just have to say, that can be arranged. We could just keep talking until it's time to go home. That's all right. Um, but we're going to look again at the story of Jesus this morning. Are you ready? This year for Easter, we've been journeying uh, through a series that we called The Road Less Traveled. We've been focusing on Jesus in every single message, and specifically we've been focusing on the journey of Jesus to the cross, and on the things he chose to pass along to us as he took those last steps towards the cross during Holy Week. As he went into Jerusalem, he shared some pretty important things. And as the famous Robert Frost poem tells us and ends, two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Jesus walked a very different road for us, amen? A road that only he could walk. And now he invites us to do the same. He calls to each and every one of us, come follow me. The narrow way, as Jesus called it, that was different back then. The reality is it's even more radical today. You know, this isn't a way of, of self-indulgence or a road of self-discovery. Although in our culture, we have a lot of people who have a lot of roads to offer us about finding ourselves, continually helping us find our inner child, our center, whatever it is we believe that is in the core of us that's going to make life make sense. But Jesus' road is very, very different. It's a road less traveled. It's not about finding yourself. It's not about your inner child. It's about selfless, sacrificial love that puts others first, lays down its rights, and chooses to walk in love. Not that we find ourselves, but he promises us, if you walk this road, you'll find me instead. It's an incredible promise to us. He lived it for us as well. He walked this out. He was the example, and there is no better place to look for a definition of what love really looks like in the story of Jesus during Holy Week. Amen? Amen. Romans 5, 7, and 8 says this, Very rarely will anybody die for a righteous person, although for a good person somebody might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ came to die for us. While we were sinners, he laid it down for us. Aren't you thankful for Jesus today? Amen. Amen. He is risen. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to fix our eyes once again on him, the author and perfecter of our faith. We come to celebrate everything that he has done for us. And we come to celebrate the fact that not only did he travel a road less traveled for us, not only did he, did he take those steps and lay down his life for you and I, but we celebrate the fact that he didn't stop at the cross and the tomb. Amen? Let's pray together. Jesus, we're here for you. We're here to remember. We're here to celebrate that it is finished. We're here to declare once again the incredible, incredible mercy of our Lord and the way that you rose again to give us new life. We're here to focus our eyes on you, Lord make you our everything. And we pray in these moments that we share together today that you would be glorified, that you'd be honored, Lord, that you'd be magnified in everything that we focus our hearts on. It's all about you, Jesus. We're here for you. We pray you would speak to us from your word. And as you already have been this morning, Lord, we pray that you would plant that seed of your word deep in our hearts, that it would bear unbelievable fruit in us in our lives today. We give you glory. And we welcome your presence here in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Well, as we've been talking about the road less traveled, we've been focusing on the words of John in the Gospel of John. And he really paints for us a picture of choice. In everything that Jesus did, in every moment that John captures, we see an incredible intentionality from Jesus. He was so focused on his mission. You keep hearing him say things like, this isn't the moment yet. My moment hasn't come yet. And in John 12, he says to his disciples, he says, this, for this hour I came, for this moment to lay down my life. It was the ultimate choice that he made for you and I. 
We have to remember something, because at Easter time in the story, it's, it's easy to kind of think, oh, Jesus kind of fell prey to the religious leaders. Like Judas might have caught him off guard or something as he betrayed him, or, or Pilate and the Romans really got one over on Jesus. Wow, he didn't see that coming. But that's not the case. They didn't catch him off guard. This was Jesus' plan all along. This was Jesus' plan from before you and I were ever even a thought. This was Jesus' plan from the beginning. Like Tosin said, this is his intention. This is his desire. Going to the cross was Jesus' choice to take the punishment for our sins that keeps us separated. Isaiah 53 said, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Because we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Truth is, every one of us has wandered away. Every one of us have chased our own desires, chased our own idea of how things should be. But Jesus never stops seeking us. He never stops loving us. He never gives up on us. And in Luke 19.10, he explains, he says, this is the reason for which I came, to seek and to save that which is lost. What does it mean for us to be lost today? Well, I can tell you, it doesn't mean wandering around aimlessly with no plan for your life. You know, not all who wander are lost. Isn't that on like every Pinterest board in the world now? Yeah? That's not what it means to be lost. It doesn't mean to be out of cell service. It doesn't mean to be just off in a field somewhere. It means trying to do everything in our own strength when we were designed to live in constant relationship with him. Lost means lost to him. It means out of touch. Disconnected from the only relationship that we were ever designed to need. Lost means a life where he isn't involved or maybe isn't even desired. Jesus came to set the record straight. His desire is not a single person would be lost. That no one would be lost John 3.16, as we mentioned earlier, everybody can probably quote it by heart. What does it mean? God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. God so loved the world that Jesus chose. God so loved the world that he walked this road that only he could walk to ransom us back that no one should ever be lost again. The cross is the ultimate moment, his ultimate act of love, and it was his choice alone. It was by his desire alone. It was a plan that only he could put in place and the reality is, it is finished. No more separation because of the cross of Jesus. Amen? Amen. An Englishman by the name of Ebenezer Wooten had just concluded a preaching service in his village square. The crowd had dispersed and he was busily engaged, loading in the equipment again, when a young man approached him and asked, Mr. Wooten, must, what must I do to be saved? Sensing that the fellow was trusting in his own abilities, his own righteousness, Wooten answered in a rather unconcerned way, It's too late! The inquirer was startled. Oh, don't say that, sir! But the evangelist insisted, It's too late! Then the young man, looking him in the eye, he continued, You want to know what you must do to be saved? I tell you, it's too late now or any other time. The work of salvation is already done. It's completed. It's finished. It was finished on the cross. And then he explained that our part simply to acknowledge our sin and receive by faith the gift of forgiveness. Reality is, we could never earn his love, but Jesus chose to go to the cross for us anyway and lay down his life for us. He came to pay a debt that he did not owe because we owed a debt that we could never pay. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him who never sinned to become sin for us so that in him we could become the righteousness of Christ. I don't know about you, but I know that I've gone my own way and wandered off. A lot. I know every single ugly thought that I have. I know every twisted way in me. I know every broken place. There's a lot of them. I'm thankful today that it's not about me being good enough. It's not about me just living a good life and being a good man. I can ne that would never work. To establish me in any kind of righteousness. My righteousness is like filthy rags, the Bible says. But he chose to love me anyway. He laid down his life. Though he was perfect, he chose to be broken for every one of us. So that in our brokenness, we could be brought back into relationship with him. Aren't you thankful for Jesus today? 
Amen. Jesus walked alone on a road that only he could walk so that we would never have to be alone again. What an incredible reality. He chose the cross forever ending any hold, any claim on your life that sin and shame have so we'd never be lost to him again. It is finished today. And here's the thing. That would have been enough. In fact, let's be honest, that would have been way more than enough, way more than we deserve, more than enough. And in the tradition of Passover, which is this time of year as well, I want to say Dayenu. See, the Hebrew people had this form of call and answer poetry that were, was read aloud together at every Passover. Dayenu simply means it would have been sufficient. It would have been enough. That would have done the trick for us. It's a call for us to remember the goodness of God to us in a world that never has enough and hardly remembers his blessings when we're craving the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Maybe we should continue in this tradition that they passed down to us. They would say things like this, and I'm paraphrasing here, but they would say, if he had simply led us out of Egypt, but had not split the sea for us, it would have been enough. If he had split the sea for us, but not given us the promised land, Dainu, it would have been sufficient. If he had led us to the promised land, but not given us the Torah, that would have been way more than enough for us. And today, I want to add to this little poem, if he had done all of these things for you and I, but had not stepped out of heaven to walk among us, it would have been enough. If he had become a man, but not lived a perfect life, not showed us how to love one another, it would have sufficed for us. If he had showed us the perfect way of love, but had not laid down his life for us, it would have been way, way, way more than enough for us. But he did. But it is finished. But he didn't stop there. He's not the God of enough. He is the God who exceeds every single expectation, every hope, and every dream of our hearts. It's not about being enough. We cannot comprehend how much more than sufficient he really is for us. We can't wrap our minds around that. He may not always give us what we want in our finite understanding, but we lean not on our our own understanding. We trust in him with all of our heart, knowing that he is forever way more than enough. Amen? John 10, he tells us, I am the good shepherd. I'm going to lay down my life for my sheep. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay down my life, and I have authority to take it back up again. By his choice, by his authority, he went to the cross. He forever abolished the hold that sin and shame have on our lives and set us free that we could be adopted into his family, cherished, loved, drawn near, and never alone. But Jesus didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. That would have been more than enough. But he kept going because he didn't stay in the grave. Easter is not a celebration just of the cross. It's not a celebration of the tomb. It's a celebration of the empty tomb. Amen? I want to read with you from John's account of what happened that amazing morning on the first day of the week. Would you turn with me to John chapter 20? It says, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded off by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead at this point. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, 
She turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I'm returning to the Father, your Father, to my God and your God. With Mary Magdalene, then went to the disciples with the news, I've seen the Lord. She told them that these things, that he had said these things to her. He is not here, the angel said to her, he is risen. His love conquers death. And not even death can hold us back from him. And in this moment, Jesus doesn't just vindicate his claim to be the son of God, but he secures for us a new life. He leaves the grave behind, and he invites you and I to do the same. The cross is essential, the centerpiece of our faith, but he didn't just lay down his life. He rose again to new life. Since he laid down his life and he rose again, we can lay down our lives as well as he calls us to. What does that mean? We can stop trying to be perfect. We can stop trying to earn his love. We can stop trying to go our own way and be good enough. We already have his love. You have the seal of approval in Christ, forgiven and free as you trust in him today. Jesus says we can lose, we can hold, we can no longer hold on to that. We can lose our lives that we may gain him and a new type of life entirely. His promises to us That we can lay down our lives and he will give us his life in us. Forgiven and empowered and everlasting. And here's the thing. That's not just about someday later on. That's not just everlasting life when this world passes away. He calls us to live free and promises us power to live this kind of brand new life with him today. Today. We celebrate the fact that he is one eternity for us. But eternity starts right now. In you and me with his resurrection power on the inside of us. He wants us to live in victory today, not just wait for someday or escape from this world. He wants us to engage. The driving point of all the discourses we've been looking at for the last few weeks that John captures for us, Jesus' last thoughts, they're all centered around this truth, this promise. He said, it's better that I go to the Father because I will send the advocate to you, the Holy Spirit, to be with you every step of the way on this road that I'm calling you to. The Spirit of truth, he will lead you along that road. By my Spirit, I will be right there with you forever, take up residence in you, and transform you from the inside out, he says, to us. Romans 8 tells us this, as Tosin read earlier, if we believe in him, then the same power that raised Jesus up from the grave lives inside of you and me today. Hallelujah. You can say amen to that all day long. He will be right here with us every step of the way. Whether this is a hard season of life, or whether you are on the mountaintop right now, he is with you every step of the way. Because he chose. Because he overcame. And now, the choice belongs to us. In his mercy, in his love, he allows us to choose as well. To every one of us, He will never stop calling, come follow me. Come follow me. The Greek word for follow, as we looked at a couple weeks ago, is akolotheo. What does it mean? It means a, in Greek, means with, and keluthos, which means road. means get on this road with me. Walk this way with me. This might not be normal, but I'm calling you to come follow. Join me on this road less traveled. And we'll be honest, the road is not always easy. If somebody has sold you on the fact that Jesus is going to make your life real easy, I'll see you later because you're going to come and want to (laughs) talk. That's okay. It's not always easy, but his promise is that it's never lonely. He'll be with us every single step of the way. He promises, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will not leave you as orphans in this world. And if we choose to trust him, we will never lack for his presence And we will never lack for his power. The road is a road less traveled. The less common way that Jesus calls us to live. But i got to say today, living an unstoppable life, that's not common. Living in resurrection power isn't casual. Today, he calls us to leave the grave behind. And that is not ordinary. But you and I are ruined for the ordinary. Ordinary doesn't exist for us anymore. 
We've been called by the one who will never let us settle for ordinary. To walk in his power and also in his authority. Later he would say to John, I was dead and now I am alive again forevermore. And I hold the keys to death and hell in the grave. I have the authority. I have the keys. And he gives that authority to us who trust in his name. It is a road that is full of power. It's a road that's full of his presence and it's a road of his purpose as well. Let's continue on in John chapter 20. What does Jesus do when he sees his disciples? It says in verse 19, On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked because they were afraid of the Jews, Jesus came and stood amongst them. Peace be with you, he said. And after this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. It's not a lonely road. It's an empowered road where his presence is with us. And there is purpose in that. He said, As the Father sent me, so I send you. The mission of Jesus goes on in us. Amen? We are called to seek and save the lost and the hurting and be Jesus to them. Following him is a road of obedience and passionately following his ways and proclaiming his truth. And he is constantly with us, giving us the strength to do that by his spirit in us, always. Jesus never stops calling to us, and the beauty of it is he meets us where we are today. We've looked at it, it's become a bit of a, a life verse for us as this year has kicked off, but I want to read to you Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30 in the message version. It says this, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. I will show you how to find real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of my grace. I won't lay every, anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Keep company with me, and I will give you this life more abundantly that you can't dream of. He says it's not about religion. It's not about how good you can become or how much you can do in your own strength. As the old saying goes, we can either live a perfect life or we can trust in a perfect Savior. And I know which one is out for me. Jesus simply says, come with me. Walk with me. I'll be right there with you. You will never be alone again. And every time it gets tough, when you feel you have no strength, I will give you my strength and I will lead you in rest. Even though it might be crazy, your rest is in me. Your hope is in me. And I have more than enough for you. And that is good news. Amen? Amen. See, it would have been abundantly more than we deserved. Far more than enough if he had simply reconciled us to the Father on the cross. But he is the God of more than enough. He wants to give us new life right now, to put his spirit within us and renew us from the inside out. A lot of times we seek for something to come from the outside in and just do something to us. But he said, no, 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 walk with me. Get on this road with me. Come follow me. And I will put in you springs of living water that well up to eternal life. Amen? He wants to give it to us now. We could never earn it. It's not about do better. It's not about try harder. It's not about that next thing you need to do or learn. Like the old evangelist said, it's too late. Everything that need be done has already been done. The work of salvation has already been finished. Titus chapter 3 tells us this. He saved us, not by works of our righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the washing of regeneration and renewal by his Holy Spirit at work within us. Abundant life. Joy and peace, the way you were designed to live in relationship with him is available today because of Jesus' sacrifice and by the work of the Holy Spirit in us. The spirit that raised him to new life again wants to raise us as well. We no longer belong to sin and death. He has set us free, and he has set us free not kind of free, not like a little bit free. He set us free to such an extent that he wants us to overflow onto every person we meet in every situation we walk into bringing his freedom with us in every step of the way. Amen. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will, ne will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this, he said? 
Because he chose, he gives us a choice. Because he overcame, he invites us to overcome with him. And we have a choice today as well. As we close our service, would you close your eyes with me for just a minute? There's nothing special about closing our eyes today. We just want to take a posture to reflect. We want to reflect on Jesus. The one who left heaven to come find us and to rescue us. To ransom us to himself again. Hebrews tells us it was for the joy set before him that he chose the cross. He was eagerly looking forward to taking away anything that could ever hold us back. It was his plan. It was his choice. And today he is right here in our midst. This is a holy moment. Today we stand like the traveler in the poem at a fork in the road. And his invitation is simple to us. Come follow me. It is an active following, not a momentary following. Come choose the road less traveled and walk down it with me. Trust in me, he calls, and leave the grave behind so you can step into this new life I have for you. What Jesus calls us to is not a momentary decision or to say some magical words. He invites us to a journey with him. It won't always be easy, but he will be with us every step of the way he told us. And today, if, if you want to go on a journey with Jesus... I would love to pray with you. If you want to take a big step of faith, starting a new journey with him today, I want to invite you. Would you simply slip your hand up? We don't have anybody looking around today, but if, if that's a journey you want to walk and you're saying, Jesus, I will follow. Today, would you slip your hand up so I know who I'm praying for? Amen. Amen. I see those hands. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you've been on the journey with him, but you would say to Jesus, you know, there have been times where I've taken every off-road from this highway there is. Today, Lord, I just want to be all in. I want to know. I want to know you more. This isn't about a moment, but about continuing to pursue you. And there have been times I haven't done that. Would you be bold and also lift your hand up? You're saying to Jesus, I want to make it all about you again. I want to be all in like never before. Would you lift up your hand? Amen. Hands all over the place. I want to pray for one more group of people as well. Maybe today you're here and you have some things in your life that just feel broken. Maybe there's areas of your life that are painful or just heavy on your heart. He is still the God who bears our burdens and heals our diseases. Whether it is a physical struggle, whether it's a relational wounding, whether a financial need or any kind of brokenness or lack in our lives, by his stripes, we are healed. Jesus wants to lift that burden off of you today. He wants to say, as he says in Matthew chapter 11, why don't you take my burden? It's light. I'll swap with you. I'll walk with you. I'll bear those hard things. I'll take the weight. I can take the weight. I am more than enough for you. That happens as we journey with him. If this is speaking to you today, if you've got something in your life, and I don't know what it may be, but you're saying, I want to leave the grave behind. There are some things that are trying to hold on to me. There are some things that are trying to drag me into my past. There are some things that I can't get over in my own strength. Would you raise your hand up as well and be real bold about it? Amen. Amen. He knows every single one of these stories today. He knows you intimately. There is not a single thing about you that is too small for him to pay attention to. He is the God of more than enough. And today, we're going to pray a very simple prayer. There's nothing magical about these words. But it's the declaration of our hearts. It's the commitment we make to him to know, as he said to the ten lepers, as they went, they were healed. As they continued on that journey of faith and trust in him, healing swiftly appeared for them. So I don't know what you maybe responded to today, but I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, I hear your call. And today I want to answer, not just for now, but forever. I give you my trust. I will follow where you lead. Thank you for the cross where you abolished sin and its power over me. Thank you for taking my shame. And thank you that you didn't stop there, but you rose to new life and you live forever. I want to follow you. 
into new life, resting in your strength. I trust in you and my life is yours. Amen, amen. Jesus, you're so good to us and we thank you for Easter. We thank you for resurrection power. We thank you that you don't leave us as orphans, that you never leave us nor forsake us, that in this moment you are closer to us than we could ever imagine. That even in the moments that are tough for us, you draw near to us. The Lord is near to those who call on him, says Psalms to us. Father, we're thankful for the fact that you did leave the grave behind and that you allow us to step into new life with you as well. What an incredible privilege to walk on this journey with you. We don't deserve it, Lord. It would have been enough if you simply put the mirror up to me and said, do you see what's going on in your life? But you didn't stop there. You never stopped, Lord. You took all of those things away. You ransomed me. You paid the price for me. You went to the grave for me. You rose up with new life for me. Father, my life is yours. My life is yours, and I thank you for new life. I thank you that the same power that raised you up on that amazing day is here working inside of each and every one of us today. Thank you, Lord God, that you are forever more than enough for us. Thank you, God, that you are changing us from the inside out, that it's not something we have to earn, but God, you have already done the work and it is finished. The freedom is here. The chains are broken in this place as we worship and lift you up to your rightful place and sing the sweet name that is above every name. In Jesus' name, we commit all of this to you. We know that this road that we choose today truly makes all the difference for us. We give you glory. And everyone said, amen, amen. He is risen. Amen. Amen.